from natural dyes which were made you know they were made something in order to perform in artist things that's also my question which hasn't been answered why can't I use just any pigments to make artist things some pigments are too thin yes you said toxic and thin is not a problem what's what's an artist paint expected to behave like as opposed to walking. It's meant to last a while? Okay. It has to last more than a while. It has to last. Forever? <laughs> Technically, that's the <laughs> definition of art. You know, it's supposed to be, uh, it's supposed to be a man-made thing, you know, of an era, and that's supposed to last, you know, for people to see. You're not really, I mean, you are making art for yourself, and, and uh, and that's fine, but also there's another dimension to it, which is, you know, people will dig this thing after this world is, is gone into flames, and they will be like, look, these people in the 21st century, what they were doing is this interesting, you know? Basically, or when you look at uh, a round round painting or something like that, and you see they were all lit with candles, that gives you an insight into their world, different than reading a book, for example, but that's also the function of art. So when you make art, you have to think in terms of it needs to last a while, you know, as long as possible. So artist pigments have to be light, fast pigments. They can be thin. They can even be toxic. Uh, but they have to be most and foremost. They have to be light, fast. All right. We'll get back to light, fast later. So. How can I know if what I have is an organic pigment and an inorganic? Well, sometimes from the name, right? For example, dioxinine violet. What do you think? Dioxinine violet or carbazole. It depends on the foods. With a name like this, what do you think it, it is? I'm sorry. Okay. Yes. The weird names, the long names, are all organics. Um, Manganese blue. Blue and organic. You said inorganic? Yes. Manganese is a metal. Titanium white. Inorganic. Do you understand? So just from the name, most of the time you can know which one is organic <coughs> and which one is inorganic. Is that clear for everyone how to differentiate? Yes? Okay. One of them, inorganic or organic, one of them is toxic. I mean, not all pigments in that category. Now, we, what we did is we just divided pigments into two big groups. One of them contains the toxic ones. Which one would that be, according to you? You were saying? Yes. Why would you say that? Did everybody understand what he said? Because I'm going to repeat. Should I repeat? No? Everybody understood? Repeat. What? You understand? Did you? Yeah, but repeat it anyway. Okay, I'll repeat. thanks. <laughs> so he said basically because it contains metal, and metal isn't the safest, best thing to have flowing inside your body. For example, your mom says, eat your vegetable, you need the iron. Iron is good inside your body. You need iron every day. If you stop eating iron, you, you, you're gonna be you're gonna be anemic, anemic, you know. So some metals are good actually in your body. Calcium, magnesium, all of these supplement things that you that we eat or that we look for in our foods, they are metal too, you know. It's just some metal, you know, aren't good to have in your body, but some of them are. So you need to understand it's not everything black and everything white. Though, the organic pigments don't contain any metal 
world. So for example, when companies are making you know, children's paint and everything else, you'll notice most of them are transparent. They're using organic pigments. They have. So you can know, for example, if you are starting out with pigments and you don't want to be you know, working with toxic pigments, you can work from organic pigments. Now, um, so what was I saying? Yeah, I was talking about the different metals. Which metals do you think can be toxic for you in the pigments? Cadmiums. What? Cadmiums? what? That's a good one. I'm happy you brought that up. Well, I know what's the most toxic. Yeah. It's too bad because um, I should be bringing this in my demos. I should be bringing sunscreen because titanium white isn't toxic. It's not a toxic pigment at all. If you have sunscreen at home, you can read the ingredients and you'll see one of them is titanium dioxide, which is, we call it titanium white, but chemically speaking, it's titanium dioxide, which is TI for titanium O2. And so it's not a toxic pigment, you know, to start with. But because of lead white, sometimes people think all the white pigment is toxic. So what I don't want you to think, I don't want you to make these groupings at the end of the talk, because basically the toxic pigments are the one containing some metals, which we call heavy metals. But titanium is a heavy metal too, right? So why is titanium dioxide not considered a uh, a toxic pigment. Good question. So you see here, before I answer that, I have my cadmium yellow in the water. Mixes very easily. And that's coming back to the, the first question that you guys had. You know, how do I mix? You know, um, which one will mix with what? So you see cadmium yellow mixes very well in the water. First, you know, first try. Now my organic one here, doesn't, you see, that's the experience you have, right? Why, why is it doing that? What do you think is happening? Why is that mixing? The water has nothing to bond to. I'm sorry. The water has nothing to bond to. Uh, no, because the pigment's there, the water's there, you know, they could bind to, you mean it can't or it has nothing to bind to? It can't. It can't would be better, right? <laughs> so why can it, can it? Does it want to? <laughs> they don't want. They don't want. We want, but they don't. I know, it doesn't seem like it's working, but why? Think about the only thing we've covered right now is organic and inorganic, but think about everything that I said. Cadmium. One of them is floating. <coughs> While you think, I'm just going to make watercolor. Why doesn't it Making paint, mixing pigment and binder. This case, gum arabic. Anybody heard of gum arabic? It's a traditional binder for watercolor. It's a natural, naturally occurring gum. A little bit like here, we have um, Christmas tree gum. You know, if you touch a Christmas tree, it has a gum. Trees produce gums. In the case of this gum, it's uh, it's a different tree, obviously and it's water soluble. So we've been using this to make watercolor as a binder, you know, for a long time. So basically I'm just putting my binder here. I'm going to add a little pigment and I'm just going to mix the two of them together because this particular pigment mixes readily in water so I don't have to really do so much to, to make my watercolor. Just mix them together like that. Yes. Does the temperature of the water change anything? That's smart, but it's kind of too smart.
far. You don't need to go that far. <laughs> Obviously, I'll tell you, because you asked the question, technically if you if the water is warmer, it would be easier. But it really I always say this in my talk is making paint has to be simpler. It really has. <coughs> the most complicated it should be is in this part. And that's that's beyond you know what I'm trying to do today. So it's not that. 